In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to run a basic multiple regression in SPSS and check some of the assumptions. Um, in order to do this, we're going to have two predictors and we'll have to do some recoding of one of them in order to get this to work correctly. And we're going to be using data from the 2012 PISA assessment and um, particular as it relates to students math achievement. So I'm going to give you a few seconds here to get um, SPSS pulled up and ready to go. All right, so once we get this pulled up, um, there's going to be a few variables that are of most interest here. And uh, for this video's purpose, we're going to focus on a question. What influence does SES and language have on students' math achievement in PISA 2012? So um, we're going to be interested in students' math achievement, which is PV1 math, the first possible value included, and that's just for simplicity purpose. ESCS is... Um, PISA's measure of students' SES. And this variable, S29, uh, or sorry, S25Q01, is language. So uh, I'm going to forget this later. So in this label column, um, you can just type language. And for this particular variable, a value of 1, um, and if you missed what I did there, under the values column, you can click this little three dots. A value of 1 um, means that their home language is the same as on the test. And click Add. And then value 2, uh, the label for that um, is different, or I think the particular wording they used was other. Something different than the language of the actual test. So we can add those here um, and click OK. That way, in case we forget later what those mean. So first of all, because this is using the values of 1 and 2, we have to create a new variable um, that uses zeros and 1s so that it can be used in regression. Because in regression, all dependent variables and independent variables must be continuous. Um, and and uh, a dummy coded variable has to be zeros and 1s um, in order for this to work. So. Uh, going to go to transform and recode into different variables. Uh, we don't want to overwrite the one that's there just in case something happens. And this will also allow us to check if we need to to see if it worked correctly. So um, first I'm going to take a, um, the language variable. And you'll notice because we typed language as the label, that now shows up so it's easier to locate it, S25Q01. And we're going to call that variable, um, I'm just going to call it lang in all caps to make it easy. Click this change button and it will fill it in where that question mark was. And then click old and new values. And from here, we first want to make sure that anything that is system missing stays system missing. And um, for simplicity, we'll make zero mean um, same. So um, or if it's a value of 1, uh, not 0, I typed that in wrong, then we're going to, to um, recode that as a 0. And if it has a value of 2, meaning that their home language is different, we're going to code that as a 1. So you can see here, system missing stays system missing. 1 becomes a 0, 2 becomes a 1. Um, click Continue, and then OK. And once you do that, um, you should see it pop up at the bottom. And we can put that in the values here. So a 0 means same as the test, and a 1 means different. I will click OK. All right, and then one last thing that we need to do, because we want SPSS to interpret these zeros and ones as a scale variable or a continuous um, variable. So we need to change that to scale, so it looks like a ruler next to it. And now we're ready to um, 
look at the actual regression. So to do this, we click Analyze, uh, go to Regression, obviously, and we're going to assume a linear regression at this point. Click Linear. Um, PV1 math is our outcome measure, so we're saying by asking this question, what influence does SEF and SES and language have on, on students' math achievement? We're saying that students' math achievement is being assumed to depend to be dependent on something else. So uh, this is the dependent variable. And then we're going to put um, SES in here and this new language variable that we just created. And then there's a few things we can get grab for output. Um, here we can grab the descriptives so we can get a little bit better idea of what we're looking at um, since we didn't run the explore uh, descriptives. Under plots, we do want to look at the standardized residual plots, so uh, go ahead and check the histogram and normal probability plot. It also is going to be helpful um, to look at the uh, z-scores of the uh, predicted versus the residual z-scores. Um, this will help us begin to make sense if a linear model was appropriate. Click continue. Uh, there are some other things under here we can save. For instance, we can save the um, standardized residuals, uh, which will help us be able to um, look at that later if we wanted to. Um, these things over here are to help us understand um, the impact of outliers on the data. We won't talk about that another day, perhaps. Um, I'm just going to save the standardized ones for now. And you'll see under options, these are the things that are here normally with other things as well. Uh, we are going to exclude cases list-wise if there are um, any issues there with um, missing variables. And you will see some missing values here. Um, okay, so click OK. And we should see the results of our regression popping up here. If you are ever wondering if it's working, um, uh, you can't see it on the screen. Let me make it a little bit smaller. There we go. So you can see down here it says running regression. So that's how you know it's doing something. Okay. Descriptive stats. Uh, the mean across the uh, subset of countries that I've included in this particular data set is 458. Standard deviation of 94 points. Um, that's actually pretty close to the global. The global uh, mean is was set to be 500 and the standard deviation of 100. You see the N is pretty big, 63,213. Um, SES has a mean of negative 0.3 and this is standardized at the global level. So zero is the global mean and um, one is the global standard deviation, but for this subset, we have a, a mean slightly below average and a standard deviation that's a little bit bigger than the global. Language, um, remember these were zeros and ones, right? Um, so a mean of 0 0.0957. Um, so, and, and, and that's not really all that helpful to us because it's just zeros and ones. Um, so we can uh, take a glance at some correlations. We do hope that our uh, independent variables, SES and um, language, are at least moderately correlated with PV1 math. Otherwise, why would we care? You can see uh, SES is correlated 0.477 is the correlation with uh, math. And language is pretty small though, 0 0.06. So at this point, you might be expecting not to see uh, much of an impact from language. Um, so if we scroll down, here's the model summary. Um, a multiple R, a multiple correlation of 0.477. So that's the uh, holistic correlation of all the predictors with the outcome measure. R square of 0.228, meaning about uh, 22.8% of the differences that we see in students' math scores can be explained by the combination of SES and um, 
whether students' home language was the same or different from the test. So it's not a huge amount, but we only have two predictors. Um, the ANOVA table um, F score of 9,334. Um, so obviously we're going to have a statistically significant result, meaning that um, the, the model statistically significantly um, the, the, the set of the regression equation statistically significantly models the um, outcome measure. If we look at the coefficients, um, you can see on the unstandardized column, um, ESCS yeah, 35.771. So, and remember how we interpret this. So if SES or ESCS increases by one, which is essentially uh, for this data set is, is close to one standard deviation, then um, the outcome measure, students math achievement or score increases by about 35 points. And remember the uh, standard deviation of the math scores was around 95 points. So this is roughly a third of a standard deviation increase. Um, and then language, I remember these are zeros and ones, right? So, um, and, and in this case, one means different than the test. So when students' language is different than the test, students' scores go up by about nine points. Students scored a little bit higher on the test when their home language was different, which might seem counterintuitive. Um, but, uh, and of course, everything is statistically significant. Um, and we will continue to investigate these in, in, in the future too, um, in, in some other videos. Uh, some things that we can look at to help us understand if this was even appropriate. So we have some data. Uh, looks like it's helping us understand the influence of SES and students' home language. Um, this is a histogram of the standardized residuals. And these should be normally distributed. What this would mean is that uh, the regression line has about the same uh, the points above the line are spaced about the same distance away as the points below the line. If they were not, it would mean that it wasn't linear. Maybe there was some kind of curve to the line. Um, and so a straight line didn't capture it very well uh, because distances above the line, for instance, were a lot bigger than distances below the line, which might indicate some sort of um, curve kind of like this. And uh, the normal PP plot um, showing the observed uh, probabilities versus the expected. And this should basically form a straight line. Remember, there are 63, over 63,000 data points. So it's difficult to see differences. It just looks like someone drew on here with a black Sharpie. Um, but there's nothing to be worried about here. It looks like things are as expected. And with this much data, it would kind of make sense that this would happen. And then the um, regression standardized residuals versus the predicted values. What we want to see here is that um, um, what the actual residuals were versus what the um, outcome measure was, we want to see no pattern between these. That, that drawing a flat line through here would basically be um, what we would make just as much sense as something else. And so uh, there is a really dense set of points here, so it's kind of difficult to tell exactly, but um, I don't see any particular kind of pattern. So um, to me, this looks like it was a good uh, uh, assumption that an, a linear model is appropriate. All right. Um, so, and then of course you would also need to check things like normality, uh, which um, I talk about in a different video. So. Um, uh, let me know if you have any questions and um, hopefully this video is helpful in understanding how to do a basic regression in SPSS.